Water scarcity is a serious problem because without enough water, we cannot grow food. The World Economic Forum estimates that if we continue with current trends, two-thirds of the world will be water-stressed, means short of water, by 2030. Just over a decade, huh? Water, a precious resource for life on Earth, part one of two. Continue watching to find out more. Comment allez-vous means how are you in French, the official language of Mali. I'm Ramata. The caring people of Mali thank you for treasuring our planet's natural resources. Today is World Water Day, celebrated each year on March 22nd to raise awareness about the crucial importance of our precious fresh water. Esteemed viewers, welcome to part one of our two-part series entitled Water, a precious resource for life on Earth. the world comes together to help create water awareness. Everyone from our world leaders to children in primary schools join the fight against the abuse, pollution and over-exploitation of our precious water resources. When one of the first time they use our water resources, the other don't have any basic access to water. The first time we don't leave the water, it reminds us that we are dividing the planet with people who are emarginated and ignored e che è nostra responsabilità garantire che non vengano dimenticate. La mondo na cada 12 minuti un menino da muore per via di come e bibi ya cususo. Hay 25 millones de refugiados en el mundo. Generalmente los campos de refugiados no pueden asegurar los 20 litros de agua potable necesarios por persona. Μέχρι το 2030, πάνω από 700 εκατομμύρια άνθρωποι κινδυνεύουν να μετατοπιστούν λόγω σοβαρής ελλείψης νερού. Μουσική On today's program, we'll explore some of the reasons water is becoming an increasingly precious natural resource. Understanding the problem of fresh water begins with understanding how little of it is actually available. Although 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, almost all of it is salt water found in the oceans. Only about 2.5% of the world's water is fresh water, and most of this is not available as it is trapped in glaciers, polar ice caps, or water vapor. As a result, only 0.007% of the planet's water is available to fuel and feed its more than 7.8 billion people. Fresh water is the resource that all of us must share to meet many of our daily needs. We need fresh water for drinking, cooking, personal hygiene, and operating our sanitation systems. We also use fresh water for raising animals, irrigating crops, and manufacturing. 
Even today, fresh water is scarce. According to the World Wildlife Fund, or WWF, approximately 1.1 billion people on Earth lack ready access to water and 2.7 billion experience water scarcity at least one month a year. Water is critical for personal hygiene. Currently, 2.4 billion people in the world suffer from inadequate sanitation. This, in turn, can lead to deadly diarrheal diseases including cholera and typhoid fever and other waterborne illnesses. According to the United Nations International Children's Fund, UNICEF, Water and sanitation-related diseases are among the leading causes of death for children under 5 years old. And 2 million people, mostly children, die each year from diarrheal diseases alone. Why do we currently have a water shortage? There are several reasons. First, over the past 100 years, the Earth's population has grown rapidly. In 1918, the world population was estimated to be approximately 1.8 billion people. By 2020, the population had soared to 7.8 billion people. In addition, as technological advancements and wealth increase, the demand for fresh water has risen much faster than the growth in population. According to the United Nations, the average person now uses twice the amount of water per day than was used a century ago. However, far more serious than our growing population and increasing per capita demand is the greatest threat of all climate change. As a result of rising global temperatures, rivers, lakes and aquifers are either drying up or becoming too polluted to use. The situation has become so critical that the UN estimates if we do not halt climate change by 2050, more than two-thirds of the world's population will be living in water-stressed regions. How does climate change lead to freshwater scarcity? Many factors are involved. We'll have a look at some of them after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Eco-conscious viewers, welcome back to our program as we learn why climate change is the primary cause of the world's ever-diminishing supply of fresh water. First of all, as global temperatures rise, the water cycle changes drastically. Warmer temperatures lead to much faster evaporation from Earth's surface. This means soils and crops dry out more quickly, making the land more susceptible to sustained droughts and causing lakes, rivers, and wetlands to dry up. In addition, warm air can hold more water vapor than cool air. And surprisingly, water vapor is a type of greenhouse gas, as it also traps heat around the Earth's surface. Thus, higher amounts of water vapor in the air drive temperatures even higher, and an extremely dangerous climate change feedback loop is created. The increased amount of water vapor in the atmosphere then leads to more volatile weather events such as excessively heavy rainfall and hurricanes. Although it seems counterintuitive, big storms with massive amounts of rainfall actually intensify water scarcity. When too much water falls quickly, the land cannot absorb it and most of it simply runs off into the waterways and ocean, while the soil and underground aquifers remain unreplenished. 
Thus, water scarcity increases. These heavy storms create yet another problem. Extremely heavy rainfall can cause flooding with possible infrastructure damage to dams and other water systems. And the rapid runoff of flood waters contaminates and pollutes the waterways. Both of these phenomena further worsen water scarcity. Over the past decade, as Earth's temperature has continued to rise, many areas are experiencing longer and longer droughts. For example, both Australia and the western USA, especially California, have suffered through several years of sustained droughts. As a result, forests have become tinder dry, leading to bigger and more intense fires. Vast areas of forest land in both California and Australia were destroyed during 2019 and 2020. Forest fires create yet another feedback loop for both climate change and water scarcity. As the trees burn, they emit CO2, which contributes even more to climate change. While the lack of ground cover means water will run off quickly without refreshing the soil or aquifers. And so, as forests burn, both climate change and water scarcity worsen. The potential consequences of freshwater scarcity are enormous. One serious problem is decreased sanitation. Even today, in many parts of the world, inadequate sanitation is a serious health threat. Water, the key to life, is also a bringer of death. Globally, each day, almost 1,000 children under five die from diarrhea caused by contaminated water. More than 2.4 billion people, a third of all humanity, have no access to sanitation. And as populations grow, water becomes a new source of danger, of conflict, given the rapid urban expansion of Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, as climate change continues, we'll see more extreme and frequent droughts, floods, and typhoons. Again, people in developing countries will be hardest hit by waterborne disasters. As clean, drinkable fresh water becomes increasingly scarce, we must carefully examine how it is used. By far, the largest consumer is agriculture, which uses a whopping 70% of the world's fresh water, much of which is consumed in raising more than 70 billion farm animals each year for food. Vast amounts of water are required to raise, clean and slaughter these animals and to irrigate the crops they eat. Moreover, raising animals for food, as we will learn in the next episode, is a highly inefficient use of our precious fresh water. The United Nations reports that there is enough fresh water on Earth to sustain today's population, but we experience shortages because they say it is distributed unevenly and too much of it is wasted, polluted, and unsustainably managed. Similarly, a recent World Water Vision report stated there is a water crisis today. But the crisis is not about having too little water to satisfy our needs. It is a crisis of managing water so badly that billions of people and the environment suffer badly. Supreme Master Ching Hai frequently expresses concern about our ever-increasing global water shortage and recommends the fastest and most efficient solution to this critical problem is adoption of the organic vegan lifestyle. Water scarcity is a serious problem because without enough water, we cannot grow food. The World Economic Forum estimates that if we continue with current trends, two-thirds of the world will be water-stressed, I mean short of water, by 2030. Just over a decade, huh? And Mexico is certainly one of the places to be affected. 
But 70% of all water used by humans goes to agriculture, especially livestock agriculture, livestock raising. So the best place to conserve water is through food, manageable food, sustainable food, not animal food. And the best way to feed more people with less water is also through food. Sustainable food practices, sustainable agriculture, organic vegan agriculture. So we all should go vegan. And the best is organic vegan. In part one, we learned that water scarcity is already a global problem, with 1.1 billion people lacking access to clean water. We also learned that water scarcity is directly linked to climate change. As global temperatures rise, so does the risk of worldwide water shortages. On today's program, we'll examine one of the gravest concerns in this regard, the melting of the Himalayan glaciers. Harboring some 600 billion tons of ice, the Himalayan glaciers are crucial for life in numerous parts of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Pakistan, India, Myanmar, and China. These immense glaciers are the source for many major rivers and supply more than 800 million people with water for irrigation, hydropower, and drinking. However, as temperatures increase, the glacial ice is rapidly disappearing. In a recent study, Scientists examined satellite observations of the Himalayan glaciers conducted over a 40-year period. Their report, published in the journal Science Advances, shows that the glaciers have been retreating rapidly since 2000 due to an average 1 degree Celsius temperature rise in the region. Regarding this finding, lead author Joshua Mora, PhD candidate at Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory says, This is one of the clearest pictures that we've seen yet of how fast Himalayan glaciers are losing ice. Researchers estimate that over four decades, the glaciers have lost 25% of their mass. The people of India are deeply concerned about the looming threat of water scarcity. Sadhguru, a world-renowned spiritual teacher and visionary named one of India's 50 most influential people, shared his concerns with the United Nations. As we have seen in India, many villages are completely empty now. People have moved away from the village because there's no water anywhere. Whole villages are gone. So this essentially means as water crisis progresses, more and more people will try to migrate to the city. If too many people migrate to the city where there is necessary infrastructure is missing, we are looking at very severe civil strife. We really fear what kind of civil strife can happen in the next twenty to twenty-five years in a country like India unless we take corrective action today. What immediate action must be taken to avert global water scarcity? To address the problem of fresh water shortages, we must first and foremost halt climate change. According to many scientific reports, including several from the United Nations, the primary cause of climate change is raising livestock, which creates more greenhouse gases than all forms of transportation combined. It is also the leading cause of deforestation, water pollution, and environmental degradation. 
Interestingly, raising livestock also contributes directly to water scarcity. Globally, approximately 70% of all the fresh water used today is consumed by agriculture. However, many of the crops grown are not being fed to humans, but instead to livestock. Almost 40% of the world's grain and 80% of the world's soybeans are fed to animals raised for so-called food. The quantity of water required to raise livestock is staggering. Researchers estimate that approximately 20,000 liters of water are needed to produce one kilogram of beef. You can save more water by not eating a pound of hamburger meat than you can by not showering for six months. In addition, raising livestock is a highly inefficient way to produce food. For example, it takes 100 calories of grain to produce only 3 calories worth of beef. Raising livestock also creates water pollution. With more than 70 billion farm animals raised around the world each year, vast amounts of excrement are washed into waterways. And the fertilizers, pesticides and other chemicals applied to the crops that are fed to these animals also washes into our streams, rivers and oceans. This pollution further reduces the Earth's supply of potable fresh water. So what's the best way to preserve our precious water resources? According to scientists, we can drastically reduce our water footprint by adopting a vegan lifestyle. While a meat diet requires 4,000 gallons or 15,140 liters of water per day, a vegan diet requires only 300 gallons or 1,135 liters. Thus, by choosing a plant-based lifestyle, we can reduce our water footprint by more than 90%. And today, many delicious plant-based alternatives to meat are entering the market. Vegan hamburgers, vegan eggs, vegan milk, vegan fish, and a host of other products are now readily available. Creating these meat alternatives uses Earth's resources much more efficiently than producing animals for meat. According to the United Nations Environment Program UNEP, plant-based burgers require between 75 to 99 percent less water, 93 to 95 percent less land, and generate up to 90 percent fewer emissions than regular beef burgers. Supreme Master Qinghai often reminds us that the organic, vegan lifestyle is the best way to feed our growing population while saving precious resources. The 20 water center in the Netherlands have found that the most efficient way to grow protein, calories and fats is through a plant-based diet. To grow one gram of protein, we need up to six times more water for animal protein than for plant-based protein. It is the same with calories. It takes 20 times more water to grow calories from beef than to grow it from grains or potatoes. So to feed more people with less water, the best way is to be vegan, and organic vegan to be exact. Compassionate viewers, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television while we take a moment to pray for World Vegan. We'll be right back after this message. Conscientious viewers, welcome back to our program as we continue to learn more about preserving water 
one of our most precious resources. Supreme Master Qinghai frequently warns us about the grave dangers of water scarcity. She reminds us that the fastest, most efficient way to preserve water is through the compassionate, noble, resource-saving, organic, vegan lifestyle. As drought and water crisis are spreading silently across the globe, affecting 44% of the world's population, even triggering uh, conflicts in some areas. The livestock industry is guzzling much of our precious fresh water. Uh, livestock feed crop production alone takes up one-third of all arable land on the globe, most of which requires irrigation. So, in reality, 4,500 liters of clean water goes down the drain for just one serving of beef. In contrast, only 370 liters of water are needed to produce one complete vegan meal with plenty of calories and nutrients from rice, vegetables, and soy protein. So a massive package of resources goes into producing meat, namely water, fertilizer, clear land, chopped down forests, fossil fuel energy, and grain soy that are fed to the animals. This is even more staggering than when, when we consider the epic pollution levels inflicted by animal production on our water resources, such as, you know, islands on rivers, lakes, and groundwater. Your country's Environmental Protection Agency reported that one of the top contributors to water pollution is agriculture runoff, which is the discharge of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, a huge portion of uh, nitrate. For example, comes from animal manure. In fact, the, the agency further expressed concern because of the presence of the highly deadly E. coli bacteria in the groundwater due to, you know, agriculture runoff. E. coli is always originally from an animal source and is found in livestock fecal material, which can also be distributed through waterways to contaminate plant-based food even. The large scale of this health risk can be seen if we consider the fact that livestock produces 130 times more waste than humans. You see, so as pigs produce three times as much as cremant as humans do, the 1.8 million pigs in your country, island, generate more waste than the whole country's entire population of 4.8. Two million. This is not to mention the 21 times of human waste that each cow produces and the huge amount from poultry that over 70 million birds produce. As the land cannot absorb it all, much of the excess runs into our rivers and soil. We are talking about a horrific amount of toxic material that poses an appalling set of problems, including poisonous gases like hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, residues of pesticides, hormones, antibiotics, and bacteria like E. coli that could and do cause food poisoning and also death. Uh, cities worldwide, including Dublin, Dublin, uh, in your country, are already struggling with water shortages. Livestock production is hazardously wasting and polluting any remaining water supply. If we really want to conserve our clean, safe water for ourselves and our children, we must stop livestock production and adopt a plant-based diet. Many thanks, Supreme Master Qinghai, for reminding us that by simply replacing meat, dairy products, and eggs with plant-based foods, we can help to preserve the world's precious water supply while simultaneously halting climate change. May we soon live in a peaceful, abundant vegan world.
caring viewers, thank you for your company today. Coming up next is Successful Refugees and Immigrants Leading the Way, Part 9. Isaac Bashevi Singer, Vegetarian, Nobel Prize Laureate, and Mystic. Right after Noteworthy News, through the grace of the Divine, may all beings live in harmony in a peaceful vegan world. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.